Perfect. All right. So um, this presentation will be going over some important things to make sure you have completed before moving in and then also providing you with some helpful tips to prepare you for on-campus housing. Um, but before we get into the actual presentation, um, we will first introduce ourselves on who is going to be talking today. Um, so I'll start. So my name's Taylor Brewer. I'm the leasing professional for Scott Campus. Um, basically, my main role is um, once housing applications are sent over to our campus, then I send out lease agreements. Um, I also see the uh, I oversee the leasing email, and then also um, through the roommate uh, matching process and everything fun like that. Um, so, Demaya. Hi, I'm Demaya Valdivia. I am the housing operations coordinator for Dodge Campus. I oversee the housing email as well as our main phone line for housing. I also do the contract offers for Dodge Campus and I assign room and roommates for Dodge Campus as well. Awesome. Um, so one last thing before we get started, um, I'm gonna ask if you could please hold your questions until the end. Um, we will host a Q&A section at the end and then Another thing that I want to note is we are also only going to be addressing housing related questions. Um, so when you are putting questions in the chat, please be mindful of the questions that you're putting on. Um, you know, I can try my best and give you the resources um, directed to the right people. But if you're asking questions about admissions or enrollment, um, I'm definitely not the person to talk to. Um, so yeah, basically making sure that we have all the housing related questions within that Q&A section. All right, let's get started. All right, so the first thing that we wanna talk about is our housing checklist. So this is things you need to make sure you're doing before you move in. Um, so the first thing that you're gonna to need to make sure you have done is you're gonna make sure you have a signed contract. So a lease contract officially reserves your space in on-campus housing. You do not have a secured spot on campus if you do not have a signed lease. With that, our contract completion processes, there are different processes for our two different campuses on how to sign your lease. Um, so if you got offered a contract at Dodge, it's a little bit different there. Um, if you got one offered on Scott, it's a little bit different there too. Um, so make sure you're checking your emails. Once you get that offer, um, we'll kind of explain that process on how to correctly sign your contract. Um, Another thing we want to touch on is if you have yet to receive a contract, this may mean that your application is still processing through our system. Um, you can absolutely check on your application status. You can just feel free to reach out to our office there. Um, then we're going to talk about that second step. So once you've signed a lease, you should have received your link to access our roommate matching application called RoomSync. Um, so this is where you're going to create your profile, answer some personality questions, and request to live with other people within your same lease type in housing. Um, and then basically the main thing there is I like to say it closely resembles a dating app, but for your roommates for next year. Um, our best advice is to utilize that RoomSync app. We like to say you know yourself better than we know you. Um, if that room sync app isn't used, then you'll be placed randomly with other roommates um, based on your room sync profile. Another thing that we want to mention about the room sync app is the room sync deadline is June 15th by midnight. Um, so make sure that you're utilizing that and making that deadline. Otherwise, it'll be randomly assigned for you. All right. The last thing that we have on there is now that you've signed a lease and then secured your housing for next year, you want to make sure that you're actually coming to see the space that you're living in before fall comes around. Um, so we do offer housing tours here um, on both campuses. Um, so for Scott campus, I'll talk specifically about our housing tours. And then Demaya, if you want to kind of chime in with Dodge campuses tours after, that would be great. Um, so for Scott campus, um, we have tours available Monday through Friday, 8 a.m. to 5 p.m. Um, if you are interested in setting one up, just email our leasing office to set up a time to visit. And for Dodge Campus, we um, you don't have to necessarily make an appointment to come in and tour our model rooms. You can just stop by one of the clubhouses, whether that's Maverick Village or University Village, um, between 8 a.m. and 8 p.m. Monday through Friday, and just request to be shown the model room. Okay. All right, Demaya. Yeah, so now we're going to talk about some roommate tips. 
So if you are already on room sync, you found some roommates, um, you guys are matching and communicate and get to know each other. You can also start talking about what to bring or who wants to bring what for your room coming up this fall. So some of the things could be regarding like the living room. If someone wants to, you know, bring a TV and someone else maybe wants to bring like, I don't know, a table or some decorations, you can kind of coordinate, you know, what you all want to do. Also with the kitchen, there are so many appliances nowadays, so you can coordinate, you know, who wants to bring what for the kitchen and, you know, maybe you all want to share some things. And so you guys aren't having a bunch of duplicates of things. Um, also the bathroom. So coordinate who wants to bring what as well. So there are multiple rooms that you'll be sharing or multiple spaces you'll be sharing with your roommates. So it's just kind of nice to discuss who's bringing what ahead of time. So you guys can kind of start planning that now. Um, some other things are just common shared items. So maybe like a vacuum, some pots and pans, a dish set, um, or even like I mentioned, a TV. You can kind of talk through those things to see if you want to share that stuff or who wants to bring what. So it's just kind of nice to coordinate and be on the same page with your roommates. Again, so you're not having duplicates and just so you know who's bringing what. Um, you can also talk with your roommates about things that you don't want to share. So <laughs> depending on what that may be, if you have like a special cup or something, who knows, um, you know, just communicate with your, your roommates like, hey, I don't want to share this just so they are aware, um, you know, kind of setting those guidelines before you actually move in with each other. So you can start talking about things that you want to bring and want to share um, and also those things that you just don't want to share with your roommates. All right, so now that we've discussed some items that you should consider talking with your roommates about before you move on campus, now we can talk about the items already provided to you within the suite. Um, so on this slide, I'm going to specifically highlight the common areas that you'll be sharing with your other roommates in your suite. Um, so first, let's talk about the living room. So what's already within the suite is a couch, a chair, an end table, and a coffee table provided to you. Within the bathrooms, there are shower curtains along with a shower, toilet, vanity area, sink, and then also a trash can. And then within the kitchen, there's full-size appliances, microwaves, a stools or a table for four, and then a trash can and a recycling bin. Um, so by that kitchen where we have the full-size appliances with a little asterisk right there, um, that the only ones that don't have full-size appliances um, is Scott Crossing Traditional and our Scott Residence Hall lease types. Those are provided with a kitchenette and have an all-access meal plan included with them instead. Um, so I just wanted to kind of make that a note there. Um, some big tips that we have is, I know this is probably a lot of information to throw at you guys, um, but we'll have this all in our official move-in guide sent in July. Um, so you'll be able to have this all kind of in one area um, sent to you when you get your room placement and your roommate information in July. Um, another thing, if you wanna actually physically like see these items within the room, we also have virtual tours. Um, on our UNO housing website. So that's also a good place to see um, what's already provided within the room. All right, so now that I've talked about the common areas and what's provided there, now I'm gonna talk about the individual bedrooms within the apartment. Um, so what's provided in there is a twin Excel bed. So when you're getting sheets and everything like that, don't get twin, make sure you're getting twin XL. Um, also what's provided is a desk and a desk chair. And then we also have a dresser and a closet. Um, with that, I get a lot of questions just regarding our beds. So they are height adjustable. Um, with that, it's basically like there's like, I don't even know what to call them. I guess like the two sides, you can pull out like the main mattress part um, and then you can adjust the height there and put it back in. Um, so you don't need bed risers. That's a common question I get, anything like that. Um, but normally it goes up to like, I would say about like an average person's like hip size for us. Um, I don't know if that's different for you, Demaya. Would you say about the same for you guys? Yeah, perfect. Um, and like I said, again, you can kind of see all the things that are provided within the bedrooms through our virtual tours um, on our website. So yeah. All right. So now that we've talked about what to bring or maybe what to talk about to bring and what's already here. Um, I wanted to kind of cover um, some items maybe that you should probably leave home. <laughs> uh, so with this, this is just kind of a basic list, um, which we have a drum set or loud instruments. We have candles. We don't want any open flames, um, hoverboards, 
pets, um, unless they're a fish in a less than 10 gallon tank or they're an approved emotional support animal. And then we also have grills slash open flame appliances and then alcohol and tobacco. Um, so like I said, just a basic list. Um, if you have other items that you're worried about um, or wondering, hey, is this allowed to bring? Um, just, I recommend reaching out to our office directly. Um, we'll also have a way bigger list of what to bring versus what not to bring in the move-in guide sent to you in July. These are just kind of our big no-nos. So, yeah. All right. Um, so now we're going to kind of talk about meal plan information. So a lot of the time after people sign their contracts and they're getting ready to go, they have their roommates planned, everything like that. Then um, our office does get a lot of questions just regarding a meal plan and how to sign up for that. Um, so we just want to let you guys know that anyone can sign up for a meal plan, whether you live on Dodge campus, Scott campus, or you're not even going to live in on-campus housing. Anyone can sign up and purchase a meal plan. Um, one thing that is noted um, if you purchase a meal plan, it's gonna be available at our Scott Cafe services only. Um, so you won't be able to use your meal plan on Dodge campus or anywhere else there. It'll strictly be within our three locations located on Scott campus. Um, with that, our meal plan is weekday and weekend hours available. We also have some holiday hours too. Um, and with that, there is no deadline to sign up. Um, if someone is on the fence about getting a meal plan or anything like that, I would say hold off. Um, and then maybe if you notice like two weeks in to being here on campus, you're like, man, all my friends are going to the cafe and I don't have a meal plan. Um, maybe I should think about getting one. Um, you can still do so even in two weeks, four weeks, whenever you want, um, you can sign up for that. So, yep. And then also kind of an asterisk down there as well. Um, students with our Scott Crossing Traditional and Scott Residence Hall lease types already have a meal plan included within their lease. So you don't have to sign up for an additional meal plan. Um, if you're confused or maybe want to clarify and make sure which lease type you have, feel free to email our office and we'll let you know if it includes a meal plan or not. And then just, just kind of a follow-up. Um, um, I wanted to let you know um, oh man, I'm frozen. That's so embarrassing. <laughs> okay. As long as you can still hear me, we're going to keep going, but meal plan prices. So there's the prices right there. Um, prices are per semester. Um, and you'll have to sign up each time. So with that, you'll want to email, um, info at scottcafe.com to sign up. When you're signing up, just include your NUID name and which meal plan you'd like. Okay, so we're going to talk a little bit about orientation. So orientation is actually going to be online. So you have to go onto your MailBlink account and sign up for online orientation. Make sure you do that. There is a checklist that you need to complete to make sure that you have everything lined up before you come uh, to campus this fall. So make sure you are getting all of that taken care of. And you can also schedule a meeting to meet with your academic program to enroll in classes. So I think previously they did like an in-person version where you'd come in um, and then sign up for your classes that same day. But um, this year you're actually having to schedule a meeting with your program um, to go ahead and schedule those classes. So make sure you're getting all that done. Uh, if you have any questions, you can contact orientation at umomaha.edu. They can help you get everything squared away if need be. One of our pro tips is to coordinate new student events to attend with your roommates. So if you are coming to an event that campus uh, you know is holding, you can you know try to coordinate with one of your roommates to meet up and you know maybe just hang out, get to know each other, adventure campus a little bit before you actually come and move in in the fall. Perfect. All right. So. Um... The fall semester is about four months away, so we understand that situations change and then other opportunities arise. Um, so if you'd like to no longer live in on-campus housing, you are going to need to notify UNO Housing via email. Um, so if the contract was signed and you're interested in canceling, you will be required to adhere to that UNO Housing and Residence Life's cancellation policy. The policy set in place depends on the date of your cancellation. Um, so down there, we have kind of the dates and the ranges. 
Um, if you cancel your contract before June 15th, you will just forfeit that security deposit that you paid when you applied for UNO. Um, anytime between June 16th to July 31st, you'll forfeit that $200 security deposit and you'll have to pay an additional $750 lease termination fee. Um, so one thing that we've determined is that students will be provided more time to cancel their housing contract, just in accordance with FAFSA being in those delays and taking more time to process financial aid this year. Um, so this cancellation policy that's set Okay, I think we lost Taylor. Give me one moment to pull up the slideshow and pick up where we left off. So sorry about the technical difficulties today. Okay, can you all see my screen? Anybody? Yes. Okay. <laughs> is it the actual presentation or is it like the broken up like slideshows? Slides. We can see the entire notes on the gotcha. PowerPoint. Thank you. That is what I was thinking. So I just want to make sure. Oh my gosh, technology, it's so wonderful until it doesn't do what you need it to do. Okay. Let's try this again. Maybe that's out, okay. Let's try this. It's working. Oh, okay. There we go. Where do we go? But you should okay. could go to the slideshow tab. Can you can you guys see it now? We can see the whole thing still. Am I um, just not? But if you go up to the top to the slideshow tab, slideshow. Right there. Yep. And uh, just go to like from the, you won't be able to see your notes though if you do it this way. Do you know what? Okay, those were more for Taylor, not for me. Okay, so. so if you go from current slide, it'll go from this one. Okay, is that working? Can you can you guys see it now? It didn't work. Um, do you have multiple screens up? Yes, I do. Okay, so make sure that the the one that you're sharing is the one that's oh, in the presentation. My mode. goodness. Okay, let me try this one and see if this is the right one. There you go. We did it? Okay. Yep, <laughs> Thank you guys for your help. Okay, so um, let's see. I'm sorry, but my camera's over here, but my screen is over here. So I'm sorry if I'm not looking at you guys. Um, but like Taylor was saying, so if you do cancel before June 15th, you will forfeit your $200 security deposit, but you won't be held for uh, held responsible for any other cancellation fees. So like she was saying, that's just to coincide with the delay in FAFSA that we recognize and just trying to make sure that we are um, accommodating and working with you all in case you do have a cancellation or change in plans. And then for canceling before July 31st, you will still forfeit the $200 security deposit um, and you will have to pay a $700, $750 cancellation fee. So 
please keep those dates in mind if you're considering cancellation or if it comes up later on and you are making a decision. If you deferred your deposit to the fall 2024 semester, that will be added to your student account um, in like August, July time. So you will still owe the deposit. So keep that in mind. Even if you do cancel, you um, will still owe something even if you deferred. So that $260 would have showed up on your application when you initially applied for housing. Okay, so what's next? Um, like Taylor mentioned earlier, June 15th at midnight is when room sync closes. So please keep that in mind. You can change, you can, you know, make adjustments between now and then. Uh, but when June 15th at midnight hits, that's when room sync closes. And that is what we'll be using for roommate um, assignments. So make sure you are getting things done. You still have quite a few months, but make sure everything is finalized by June 15th. And then on June 25th is our next Housing 101 presentation. Hopefully we won't have any, any problems with technology then, but we will be talking more in depth about preparing to move in. And then same with July 24th, we'll be having the same presentation, um, just two different dates. So you don't need to join both. You can join one or the other as we'll be covering the same information. And then move-in dates. So if you wanna mark your calendars or just write this down, we are two separate campuses, so we do have two separate move-in dates. So August 17th through the 18th is gonna be move-in for Scott campus. And then August 22nd through the 24th is gonna be move-in for Dodge campus. So please be aware of those dates as they are approaching really fast. Okay, and our last slide, this is just the contact information. If you have any questions or if you just want to reach out and check up on something, you can feel free to email us at our main um, housing email address. And then there's also our phone number as well if you want to contact us via phone. We kind of mentioned earlier how to go about the tours, but um, if you have questions about that as well, you can just email and we'll be happy to get you with the right people to get that figured out. So, with that being said, that was really the end of our presentation. Again, sorry about the technical difficulties. Um, if anyone has any questions, you could go ahead and start entering them in the chat and we can start getting to them. I have a question. Yeah. It's all right to ask. Yeah. So as of now, I'm in a study abroad program outside the United States, and I would like to know if it's possible to move into the Dodge campus at an earlier time. I know it's 22nd to 24th of August, but given the situation with ISEP and whatnot in my program, I would like to know if it will be possible to move in a couple of days earlier, given my situation with the study abroad program. So I'm going to encourage you to email us. Um, that way I can look up your information and that way we can just have direct contact um, so we can figure that out for you. We do have the option for students to move in early, but that information comes later when you actually get like your room assignment and more information for a move in. So I would just encourage you to just send that email. That way we can correspond and I can help you figure that out. All right. And the, the assignment will be at what day again? I'm sorry, what assignment? The room assignments. Like when will you get the room assignment information? Yeah. That'll be coming in July. So we send out official roommate notification in your actual room and building assignment in July. All right, that's understandable. Okay, so we have a lot of questions. Let's see. Okay, someone asked, do you typically have housing for the number of students who want to live on campus? That is a really good question. And I, this is my first year doing this. So Denise, I don't know if you want to chime in about the amount of housing we have available for the students applying. I mean, we, we technically have, um, you know, about 2,500 beds on campus, but it also is based on um, how many we have returners um, coming in as well. Um, so this year we had a high rate of returners um, come back. So that leaves less numbers for new students coming in. 
Um, it's not a requirement for freshmen to live on campus. So we allow our returners first, um, first opportunity to renew their contracts. Uh, so, so technically, yes, we could have more um, apply than what we have available, but at this time, we, we still have availability. Um, we also hold so many spots for certain um, scholarship, uh, scholarship, uh, what do I want to say, learning living communities such as like TLC, um, Scott, scholars, like scholarship programs, like students that are on scholarships. So we have we have to hold so many spaces for them as well. Um, so I, I don't know if that's answering your question or not, but um, technically, yes, we could have more people apply than what we have available for housing. Okay, Taylor, you're back. Um, we're on question. So I'm just gonna throw you in because someone asked, does the dining hall and or other food options stay open for breaks? Yes. Yeah, we do. Um, it really just kind of depends. Like some of the time we'll close, but those will be like announced way before and kind of posted through like signage all throughout campus. Um, but typically like through some breaks, yes, we do. Some of the times we close, it really just kind of depends, but. Okay, someone else asked, I know some colleges don't allow like Echo Shows or Lexus in the dorms. What are the rules on that? I'm not familiar with any restrictions on Alexas or Echoes. I don't believe we have any rules regarding those. I think you can kind of bring your electronic devices as needed, um, but yeah. Okay, can students always pay for Scott cafeteria meals a la carte regardless of meal plan or even if they don't have one? Yep, so we do have walk-in pricing available and that can just be done through card, it can be done through cash. Um, there's always gonna be kind of a, an attendant working that desk right before the cafe um, where, where you can walk in. Um, so yeah, we do have walk-in prices. I don't necessarily have it on there, um, but it kind of depends on which time frame you're going from, if it's breakfast or lunch or dinner. Um, normally they kind of range from $10 um, to like 15, I think would be like the highest. So that's kind of a range there. So yeah. Okay. Someone asked to see the meal plan slide again. So I have that up um, if you want to reference that as well. Excuse me. Someone said, is there storage available over the summer for students who are out of state? Um, I can answer for Dodge Campus. So we don't have storage available for students who are out of state. Um, if students still want their room, they will have to request an extension um to go ahead and keep the space that they have but we don't have any storage for them to keep their belongings in um, over the summer um for us nope we won't provide storage or anything um it's really just basically you have ownership of a unit um, based on your lease agreement um but yeah we don't reserve any for the summer yeah like similar to dodge campus it would be um, you would have to request a summer housing. So. Someone said, can you go back to the slide before this one so I can write it down? I'm not 100% sure which slide you're referring to. I'm going to just assume it was this slide at the time the question was asked. <laughs> um, okay, I already applied for my housing application. How long will it take to have my application reviewed or when will I know what dorm building I get in? So... I will say that we are just right now waiting for contract offers that we have out right now to be signed um, and returned to us before we send out more offers. So students have that two week period um, time frame to sign their offer. So that kind of delays things as well. Um, but we don't have an exact timeline to provide because things change um, literally every single day between cancellations and just things moving around. So we, we don't really give people a timeline because we would hate to promise you something and then not be able to deliver at that time. So right now, if you turn in your application, you submitted it, you're in a really good spot. You're just waiting to hear back from us. And if you want to add anything, Taylor, to that. No, that was perfect. Yeah, we're kind of in the same boat. Um, once you're offered a lease contract, you'll be notified mm -hmm. via email. Um, and then just a reminder, you'll have that two weeks once that contract is offered to you to sign it. 
Um, basically, after that two week deadline, what I would say is if you do not complete that contract, because we have applications and people waiting to receive a contract, um, if you don't sign within that two weeks, then basically um, you're considered a non responder and placed back on the applicant list. And then we offer to the next person on the list. So, yeah. Mm -hmm. Similar question. We signed up for housing on March 20th. We have not received a leasing agreement yet. Who will that be coming from? So we really honestly don't know like what you're going to be offered until we get to your application. So like when Taylor mentioned, you know, you'll be notified via email. That's typically when you find out what you're going to be offered and who the offer is coming from. So we can't really tell you that until we get to your application. Let's see. Um, the move-in dates are on this slide, so if you wanted to refer back to those, they are on the current slide right now. Let's see, can you go over the meal plans again, how they differ between the two campuses for freshmen? Do they have a choice or they all go to the Dodge campus? So the meal plan discussed kind of on this session is basically um, the only prepaid meal plan that you can buy if you're living on campus and that's done through Scott campus. Um, so like anyone can sign up for it. If you're a Dodge campus resident, if you're a Scott campus resident, or if you're just a UNO student not living on campus. Um, but basically this one, if it's the prepaid meal plan you're talking about, it's gonna be offered at our Scott campus services only. Um, so there's three locations here on Scott campus where they can use it. One is our Scott Cafe, which is kind of like the unlimited buffet style. Um, we have like salad bar. Um, oh my gosh, you have a hotline. You have like a burgers and fries section. Um, we have specialty bars. So it's like Taco Tuesday, all of that fun stuff there. Um, so if you have a Scott Crossing traditional or Scott Hall lease type, that meal plan is already included. Other than that, if you're in any other lease type on Dodge or Scott, then you are not required to have a meal plan, no matter your um, class or anything like that. You will always have a choice to kind of sign up for a meal plan. So hopefully that clears that one up. Okay, when is due date for contracts for the returning students? So I can speak for Dodge campus. Um, people who are renewing who are current residents and want to live on campus again next year, they get priority. And so we sent out those, I want to say like the email, like interest email and in like end of November beginning. And then we ended it in January. So students had a few months to fill out that form. And then we sent offers to those students. So right now, if someone is applying who is a returner, um, they are basically having to go through the process all over again because our renewal um, process or time period for Dodge Campus has ended. Yep. Yeah, for Scott, um, it's very similar, just kind of the timelines are a little bit different. So if you're a current resident living in on-campus housing this year, um, basically what we do is we do our renewal season and that happened for us in like later in December. And then um, our renewal residents had the deadline of February 11th to receive renewal housing priority um, before we opened our doors to new applicants here on campus. Once that February 11th deadline hit, um, basically after that, it's first come, first served on availability basis, and we opened up to incoming freshmen, transfer students, and everything like that. Um, so the renewal housing priority deadline has already passed. Um, and so we just ask at this point that you get your name on the applications list if you are wanting to renew and you haven't received a lease yet, um, or maybe your renewal contract expired because you didn't sign it, get on that list, reapply for housing on your map link account. Okay, someone said, am I supposed to use my UNO email for room sync? I would say use your personal, that would be my suggestion, but I don't think there's necessarily one you have to use over the other. No, nope. yeah, I know like both of our campuses send um, the room sync link to the student using their personal email and their UNO email. Um, so it should already be sent to you um, through both. But yeah, there's no preference. I don't think people get to see your email. I think it's just kind of what you sign up with um, and how you prefer to receive those communications. So yeah. Um, before that, I got like a direct message um, just about how um, someone signed a Scott campus lease, but then got accepted into a different scholarship program. 
Um, and they're asking basically, since she got accepted into the different scholarship program, um, would they be sent or getting a new housing assignment or lease contract to reflect um, her acceptance into that program? Yes. Um, basically, what our offices do is we work a lot with these scholarship programs. Um, if this program provides you with housing, um, they basically send your name over that, hey, you've been approved for housing, and then we'll switch your lease type as needed. Um, but yeah, kind of, I know Demaya's kind of touched on it. We hold beds for athletics and scholarship programs. Um, that would be considered one of them. We just need to kind of coordinate with those scholarship offices and everything to kind of get those approved names. So we will be working on that. If you know you've been approved, um, just kind of wait and you'll be notified via email once it's gone through. Oh, same with that ELLC program, kind of like that. Um, ELLC is actually located in, on Scott campus in Scott Village. So, sorry, <laughs> jumping around. Wonderful. Let's see. Someone said, which Scott rooms have a full kitchen again? And then shout out to Kayla. Kayla put a link in there. I don't know if you want to touch on that question, Taylor. Yeah. Um, so Scott campus lease types, um, almost all of them have a full kitchen except for Scott Hall and our Scott Crossing traditional units. The other ones have a full kitchen. So if you're in Scott Court, Scott Village, those should all have full kitchens. Um, and then our Scott Crossing suite style units have a full kitchen. If you're confused on which lease type you have, please just email in. I can let you know. I'll look at your specific lease agreement and I'll tell you what floor plan you have. But. Same with the following question. What is needed for a room sink again? I am assigned Scott Crossing is a meal plan part of the lease automatically. Could you repeat that question? Where is that at? Um, right. <laughs> okay, yeah, I got you. Um, what is needed for room sink? Roommate sink again. I am assigned Scott Crossing as a meal plan part of the lease automatically. Are they asking about room sink or about the meal plan? I'm sorry. I, I don't know. Two and one. Okay. Oh, no, the okay. first part. What is needed <laughs> for room sink again? Oh, um, you just need to get that link in your email and you basically create a profile. So you'll wanna sign your contract. So you have to have a signed lease agreement here on campus. Once you have that, um, our office will send you the link to your specific room sync portal. And then once you do that, you'll click on that link and it'll have you create a profile there. Um, and then that's it. You'll kind of go through and match with other people. So, and then the second part of the question, I'm so sorry. They are assigned to Scott Crossing and they wanna know if the mail plan is automatically a part of their lease. It depends on which part of Scott Crossing you're in. So Scott Crossing has like three different lease types. Um, so if you're in the traditional, yes, it includes a meal plan. Um, if it's in the academic suite style or the annual suite style, no, it does not include a meal plan and you'll have to purchase it separately. Are we required to have renter's insurance or is that an option? Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, for sure. Yeah. So we don't say renter's insurance is a requirement. Um, so we like to say it's an option. However, we definitely recommend that students do um, just to kind of cover. I guess you never know what will happen. Um, so yeah, we kind of partner with GradGuard. We don't specifically do the renter's insurance uh, here at UNO, um, but we do strongly recommend GradGuard. It's for a lot of university housing. So if you are going to get one, um, I would do that one or just kind of go with your family's insurance plan and kind of add that renter's insurance on top. But no, it's not a requirement. We don't ask you to show proof of it or anything like that, but it's always good to have just in case. Someone said a follow-up on the storage question. If you have an annual lease, does that mean you can stay year-round though the lease is still ended in July, leaving a few week gap? I can talk about this as far as Dodge Campus and how we do things with annual leases. So say your student has an annual lease and they are already signed up to renew for next year, then yes, they will be able to stay on campus year round. They won't have to move out, say in between like July 20th and August 20th, just get thrown out random dates there. Um, so that is an option if they are already signed and renewed for the following year. If they haven't renewed, um, then they would have to move out on the date that their lease ends. And that's speaking for Dodge Campus. That's exactly right for Scott Campus too. Um, if 
you know, you're signing a renewal lease and you want to be in your same exact place um, for next year, you're renewing in that same exact placement. You don't want to change rooms. You don't want to change buildings, anything like that. Um, you are good. It'll Your lease will automatically roll over and you'll be able to kind of live on campus year round. Um, so yeah, normally it the contract would technically leave like a few week gap, except for the ones who renew in an annual contract. Um, so that will reflect in our renewal season when that happens kind of like end of fall semester. So. Um, Does it no, go ahead. That's the question I was going to do. Yeah. So, you're, you're killing it, please. Uh, Does annual lease contract live on campus from August to July? And I'll let you answer too. It, yes, it is. Yup. Yep. So um, August from our move-in day all the way to July. Um, and if you decide to renew, then it would just automatically roll over to that next year. So, yep. Um, then we already have that answer to the meal plan thing. I got a direct message that says, I assume Scott dorms are co-ed. Are they co-ed by hall, floor, not divided? Um, so I believe that no matter which campus you're on, um, we all have co-ed buildings. Um, so they're not specifically divided by floor or anything like that. Um, they're just kind of divided by suites. Um, so if you're living there, um, you could be across the room from, if you're a female dorm, right across the hallway could be a male dorm. Um, so we don't divide um, except for within the exact apartment. I'm sure, Demaya, do you do the same thing? Exact same, yep, exact same. Yeah. Perfect, hopefully I explained that well enough. <laughs> okay, I got a direct message. If a student gets a contract for a building that requires a full meal plan and that is not what they wanted, does the student decline the contract and hope for another contract? Oh, I'll, I'll leave this one for you because it sounds like a Scott offer. Yeah, for sure. Um, so if you were provided that lease um, and it's maybe not what you're wanting, um, you can absolutely reach out to our office and see if there's anything available. However, if that's the lease type you were given and if it didn't match your housing preferences, that's most likely what we had available to offer at the time. Um, so if... My best recommendation is if you know you want to live on campus, um, regardless of the lease type, um, I would definitely sign a contract. Um, if you really don't want to live here, if you think you're going to have that traditional lease and you're not going to want to live here and you want to decline that, then I definitely would. Don't sign a contract that you don't want to live in. Um, however, I can't guarantee um, that we'll have something else available. The lease agreement that was sent is what I can guarantee that I have a spot reserved for you for. Um, so you can keep checking in with our office and everything like that, but it's not a guarantee that you'll receive housing. Um, also, once you're kind of offered a contract, remember you have that two-week signing deadline. After that, if you don't sign a contract, basically your name goes back on the applications list. That could give you a chance of receiving a different lease type, or if we get to your application again and you're offered the traditional, that's probably just what we have available. Um, so it really kind of depends on if you're willing to take that risk. Um, and kind of weighing those options on if this lease type is uh, good for you. So yeah. Let's see. I like that next question's for you too, because it's about the LLC. Oh, um, do I have to switch campus? Or... The ELLC program is on Scott campus. We'll eventually have to switch you over. Um, but I would talk to maybe your scholarship program. I haven't gotten any names from the ELLC program yet, so we haven't switched you quite yet. Um, but just be looking in your email for it. But yes, I believe all the individuals when the, within the ELLC program are required to live in Scott Village. So if I've signed my lease and haven't received a room sync link, who do I contact? Um, it depends on which campus you're with. Um, so if you're with Dodge, I would contact their office. And then if you're with Scott, I would contact Scott. Um, and basically I would be checking your spam and junk folders is basically my big advice. Um, but also, I know for Scott Campus, I'll talk about us, is if you just signed your contract within like early this week or like late last week, for example, um, we probably haven't sent it to you yet because we send room sync links on a weekly basis. I don't keep checking them every day. Um, I send them towards the end of the week. So um, if you signed it here really recently, you probably haven't gotten it yet, but you'll get it by the end of this week. Yeah, we for Dodge Campus run the same boat. So 
And so my to-do list to send those out to people who have just recently signed. Um, but yeah, if you sign within like the last week or so, I may have not sent you the room sync link yet, but um, it is my goal to get that sent. But you can always, you know, follow up just to double check as well. Okay. And then I am, I'm slowly flipping through the slides. So I hope <laughs> you're catching those. <laughs> That's awesome. Okay. Um, and then I'll, I'll keep reading if you want to like slowly go through. You got oh, it. Oh yeah, I just want to slip like flipping them every oh, like. perfect. Okay, okay, look at you. Yeah, yeah they said they didn't like, we, they, they, we yes. didn't need to repeat anything. So I'm just going to do it. Um, and then, so we have a question. Are the nine month lease options to correspond to the fall and the spring semesters? Yes. Um, so that move-in day and everything like that is coordinated specifically with the beginning of the fall semester. And then um, at the end of the spring semester, we always account for finals week and everything like that. Um, and so that'll happen, move out would happen after. So yeah, um, since we are university housing, we're gonna make sure that we're accommodating those um, university important dates and everything like that. So yeah, it will correspond. That's a great question. Um, is laundry coin operated or card operated? Um, it's not specific per property. Really, I'm just gonna talk about all of Scott campus for laundry and then Demaya can kind of go over Dodge. Um, I think Dodge's is pretty easy, right? You just... Yeah, Dodge, you don't have to pay. <laughs> yes, yeah, so with Scott campus, um, it's coin operated and it's card operated. Um, so with card operated though, you have to load money onto your MAV card. Um, and so it's called MAV money. Um, and there will be kind of like a little instruction on how to do so there and everything like that within the laundry rooms, but it is coin operated too. So you can definitely bring some quarters um, and it's gonna be $1.75 per load. If you did want to move campuses or buildings the following year as a returning student, do you get first choice to move? Yes. Um, so our renewal residents do receive housing priority for a certain amount of time. Um, so we do that closer to the end of the fall semester. Basically what our campuses do is we basically send out these surveys or anything like that um, to each resident who lives on campus currently asking them about their interest and if they want to renew their contract. Um, when we do ask that, we ask them questions on, hey, are you instead wanting to go to Dodge campus? Are you wanting to change to this building and everything like that? They receive priority and we do that before we even open up our doors to new applicants on campus. Um, I got a direct message. How old does your student need to be to sign their own contract? So for Dodge campus, if your student is um, offered, a contract if they are 18 when they sign the contract then they don't need a parent or guardian signature um, but if they are 17 or younger at the time that they sign their actual contract then they do need a proxy signature and they will be able to put in the proxy um, person's information on their contract and then you will get a separate email so you can go in and sign your portion, but that's only if your student is 17 or younger when they're signing their contract. Otherwise they can sign on the phone if they're 18. Yeah. For Scott campus, it's a little different. We do require a guarantor um, regardless of age, um, just because we are kind of a residential company just outside of UNO. And there's also the option to pay us directly. Um, so there is a little bit more financial liability within that contract there. Um, we do, there are very rare occurrences. Um, however, we do um, waive the guarantor at some times, um, but you would need to contact us specifically and I'll kind of share with you those requirements. However, most of the time um, we are going to require that guarantor. If you are living on Scott campus, how much time should a student allow to ensure they get to class on time with the shuttle if needed? It's a great question. Um, so I'll talk kind of maybe like about my personal experience. So I lived on Scott campus just as a, like a student. Um, and then I was also an education major. So a lot of my classes were up in the education building, like way out at Roskins Hall. Um, what I did, basically, I got out there 15 minutes before and just kind of waited for the shuttle. Um, and that normally did me good. Um, can't complain too much. Um, with that, another thing that I did, especially... One thing I noticed was the winter time. I'm not too big of a fan of cold. I'm from Florida. Um, so basically I didn't want to wait outside um, for the shuttle. So what I did and what you guys can do too is um, on your phone, you'll be able to download the shuttle tracker 
and it'll basically tell you how far away it literally like will have the shuttle like on a map um telling you like how far away it is so i would always wait um right inside staying warm and then as soon as i saw it coming up close on my shuttle tracker i would walk outside and it would be there um so normally i haven't had any trouble personally um but yeah just kind of making sure you're taking that 15 minute time um to kind of get where you need to be um if you get the all access meal plan oh sorry Demaya. no you got it you got it <laughs> If you get the all access meal plans, does that include weekend meals as well? That is correct. Yep. So um, it'll be those meals are for the entire semester. So, yep, we have weekend and weekday hours. So you can definitely use those there. Um, let's see. Someone said if his older brother is already in the dorms and completed room sync for next year, will they be able to see? Or select each other as roommates once he completes his room sync or how does that work um i will say that we continue to add people to room sync so it's not you know everyone won't get added at the same time i would say as long as they have the same uh, contract or lease type they should be able to find each other on room sync but um even if his older brother already like completed room sync like we said changes and things can be made up until june 15th so that is still a possibility if they sign the exact same contract or, or lease type. Yeah. Same here. <laughs> I don't see any other questions. I got a question about ELLC and asking if their contract would change or be the same if they're putting Scott Campus for ELLC it'll change. Um, if you're not within Scott Village already, then we'll be sending you a new contract. So you'll have to re-sign one. Can Any you change? change? That is a good question. Girl, we keep saying this at the same time. <laughs> um, can you change meal plans throughout the year? Um, Example, 160 to all access if necessary. Such a good question. Um, so my biggest advice to you is always start small because you can increase at any time. If you start big, you can't decrease. Um, so if you're unsure, you're just like, eh, I don't know if I'm actually going to use it. Let's start off with a small um, 80 meal plan. Um, if you realize my friends are going to the cafe, I'm going to need a lot more meals than that. You can always increase it to an all access if you're already at an all access meal plan, you cannot decrease. It's going to stay at that top one. Um, so that's my biggest advice for you there. But yeah. Where can you get a kit to raise slash loft the bed and add a headboard? Um, so with that, we don't provide loft kits. I don't know if you do anything different. Really, we just have like the height adjustable portions of the beds. Um, so we don't do loft kits or anything like that. It would just kind of be the standard height adjustment for the bed that you're given. Same. I don't. I don't know if people can add headboards. I have not seen those. Yeah. I don't know. I, don't I think. Th I think if you just bring one, like yeah, but <laughs> like, I don't <laughs> we see don't, it when I'm not supposed to. Yeah, we don't provide any for you. That's such a good question. Probably stay on for a couple. If you have questions, you can shout them out or you can type them, whatever you're comfortable with. We're here. <laughs> Thank you. You're welcome. <laughs> <laughs> um what is allowed to attach decor to walls in scott so we say like small pins and nails um so don't use any command strips or anything that would kind of destroy the paint or the wall on there um so yeah that's such a good question yeah that'll also be in the move-in guide that we have um basically how to hang up stuff properly um and what not to bring there so yeah Vacuum. Do you know much about the vacuums on Dodge? 
I do. So at Dodge, we have vacuums that you can rent for free um, in both the clubhouses. So if you live in Maverick Village or University Village, you can just go to the clubhouse and request to borrow the vacuum. For Scott, um, basically what we do is we have a vacuum available, like your resident assistant who will kind of be um, assisting you on your floor. They've all been provided a vacuum that you can kind of rent out from them. Um, sometimes they'll have it out in the hallway just for you to kind of grab quick um, or they have it in their room and you just kind of have to talk to them there and get it yourself. Um, we also have some extras like in our lobby and our clubhouse and everything like that. So if someone's already using the one that the RA has, totally fine. We definitely have plenty around campus so that you can rent them out. Do bedrooms have locks on them? <laughs> yes. Um, so for Scott campus, I'll, I'll at least talk about Scott. Um, when you move in on your move-in day, when you're checking in and everything like that, you'll receive um, like an actual physical key specifically for your bedroom within the apartment. Um, so yeah. Yeah, same thing for Dodge. Yeah, you have um, an exact key that goes to your room. And so you are able to lock it and only you have access to that key. But it's kind of interesting because you're, you know, the, your other roommates, you all share a different key, but you all can like get into the room, but your like bedroom is a separate, you know, lock. So you will be able to use that key for both your main door and then like your bedroom door. Perfect. Can we bring LED lights? Um, we definitely don't re recommend those just because those have those ad adhesive strips on them and that destroys the paint on the wall. So typically we say, no, leave those at home. Does rooming with an RA change any living aspects? Good question. Like, I would, yeah, I would say like for us at least, like you're still gonna be placed in the standard four bed, two bathroom floor plan um, as any other student would be. I don't think it does. Um, yeah. Does it for you, Demaya? <laughs> I would say, you know, because you're living, like like Taylor said, in the same standard room you would even without living with an RA. Um, I know at least on Dodge campus, RAs have the opportunity to choose their roommates. So, um, you know, you may be moving in with someone that you actually are friends with or that you know. So, but overall, I don't think that it changes your aspect of living, you know. Yeah. Yep, roommates, or hello, mm -hmm. RAs also give the choice um, get the choice to pick roommates and everything like that. So they're also on the room sync app too. So how much time do you have to unload your vehicle at Scott court on move-in day? Um, kind of just in general, that's such a good question. You're yeah. asking good ones. <laughs> um, so like we normally say like 10 to 15 minutes. And then also the nice thing is we have resident assistants. We also like have athletes come in and help. Um, so you could have uh, our big guys are like the hockey team or the soccer team. Um, they will literally come and help you and just grab a bunch of your stuff. Normally it does not take the 10 to 15 minutes cause your stuff is already up in one go. Um, but yeah, I would say if you're getting up super close to the building and everything, 10 to 15, um, but also Scott court, like you're going to have access to that parking lot. Um, so we just ask that you pull up quick and then you park somewhere else super quick. I don't know. It didn't take me long to move in at all. Um, and then also I've seen a lot of parents impressed on move-in day with the athletes and everything like that, just getting it up in one go. So, <laughs> oops, sorry, hit my table. Ooh, do we sign up for certain time slots for move-in or does everyone just show up whenever throughout the move-in days? Such a good question. Demaya, do you want to start? Yeah, so for Dodge Campus, since we have those three days, um, the 22nd, the 23rd, and the 24th, you will sign up for a certain time slot, and that's when you are, you know, expected to show up and move in and everything, so we'll send that information when we send out, you know, more things later in the summer, but for Dodge Campus, you will sign up for a time slot and, and a day to come move in. Yeah, um, same here, like, we're going to have time slots and everything like that, um, and you'll be sent that when we send out that moving guide in late July. So once you have your room placement and your roommate information, once we send out that moving guide, 
Um, throughout that day on August 18th, you'll basically get like a 15 minute window to kind of grab your keys and your welcome information and all of that stuff. Um, and then you'll be sent on your way to go check in. I am looking up the information for parking services. Um, so you will need to buy a parking permit if you plan to bring your vehicle to campus. Um, and they vary. So I'm just going to attach their information so you can kind of look into it and get that info. Mm -hmm. But yeah, so housing, like having a lease contract does not like automatically include parking. You'll have to purchase that separately. Um, and then also when you do purchase that permit, um, it is assigned to your certain property that you've signed a lease at. So like, for example, if you're a Dodge Campus resident, you won't have access to purchase a Scott Campus permit or anything like that and vice versa. It'll be specifically for your property. Do you need a permit for bicycles? Um, no, we just recommend that you bring a U-lock um, for your bike. And then also we do ask that you register it with UNL Public Safety um, just for that security aspect of it, um, but we don't require a permit for it. Yeah, I know on Dodge Campus we have where you can register your bikes um, at the front desk as well. So it's registered with like your building. Um, again, it's not required, it's just suggested. Just another, you know, way to ensure your bike is accounted for and if anything happens, you you know have documentation that it's yours. Yes. Stay on for a couple minutes here. Feel free to shout them out or type them in. Probably give it another minute here and then call it good. And if you have any other questions, um, maybe you don't want to put them here or um, we didn't cover it or anything like that, please feel free to email our office and we'll be able to assist you that way too. So I'm told something. Well, my parents need a day permit when helping me move in. I live out of state and they are driving up with me. That's a good question. And do you know, Taylor? Yeah, so you know parking services actually doesn't ticket on move-in day just because they know a bunch of people are coming in and helping people move. After that, though, um, they'll need to be careful where they park because um, then after that, it kind of goes where it's not open parking anymore and we start ticketing. Um, so, no, they won't need a day permit when they're helping you move in and everything like that. We know a bunch of cars are coming in because we're moving people in. Um, but, yeah. Can we nail things into the wall to hang them? Um, so I know like tiny nails, kind of like a pin size, I think is appropriate. Um, we have that more in the moving guide. I forget what size nail. Um, I'll get back to you. If you want to send me an email with that, I can dig into our move in guide a little bit more and look and get the answer for you. Um, but typically we say really, really tiny nails, not big ones. Same with you, Demaya. You think? Sorry. <laughs> I, okay, I, this, this is my first move in, so I'm not sure, but I'm going to go with what Taylor said, and I'm pretty sure it's the smaller nails that you should be using. Yes. Um, and then you're asking like the general hours between the three meal option like locations. I'm going to type them in chat because um, I like have them here and I can tell you them, but I feel like if I write them down for you, that would be maybe like a little bit easier for. Yeah, but this is this year's, so I'm not exactly sure these are subject to change for next year, but hopefully this just kind of gives you a guideline of what we're looking at. I don't think they're going to change too much, but I guess you never know. Actually, while you're doing that, I could answer 
is there visitor parking for when parents come to visit? So I know that parking services does offer a visiting or like a visitor pass. So I think you can like tailor that to how long, you know, your parents are coming to visit, but that is an option. So when they are here on campus, they have that permit and can avoid getting any tickets. Cool. Well, I think we'll wrap it up there. Um, if you have any other questions, maybe that we didn't um, cover or anything like that. Oh, hello. <laughs> <laughs> um, I don't have a car. Yeah, so electric scooters and everything, they're not allowed to be stored within the unit just because it is um, a fire and security hazard. Um, so like same thing with like motorcycles or hoverboards, we don't allow those within the unit. Um, so those would need to be stored elsewhere. Um, so yeah, that would be kind of the only. I don't see anything else. Yeah, I think we'll call it good. But if you have any other questions, feel free to email us. We're here Monday through Friday, eight to five. So we'll help you out. <laughs> All right. Thank you guys so much. Yeah. Thanks for coming. Have a good evening. Stop recording. <laughs>